Going in for the checkup, he puts a stethoscope on my chest. He's like, take a deep breath. Do it again. And he just kind of tilts his head and he's like, huh. This is me. Actually, it's the first picture of me ever taken. My very first day. To quote Zay Frank, a special day, but kind of a rough day on everyone involved. I was born with a ventricular septal defect, a hole in the wall that separates the two lower chambers of the heart. It's actually pretty common. I had open heart surgery when I was little to get it repaired, and everything came out all right. There were no complications. There were a few things off limits. No roller coasters, no contact sports, no heavy lifting. Obviously, I did pretty good on that one. <laughs> No drinking, no drugs, no smoking, which I wasn't going to do anyway, but still. General rule of thumb was take it easy in the heart department. Fast forward a few decades. I turned 30 and it had been a while since I had actually like gone to a doctor to get a checkup. My wife was like nagging me to go get it taken care of. You're in your 30s now. Just take an afternoon. Make sure everything's okay. I went. He puts a stethoscope on my chest. He's like, take a deep breath. Do it again. Huh. I had a murmur, which I've actually had ever since I was little, but it was a new doctor, hadn't been to the hospital in a long time, and he was like, all right, let me just get you hooked up with cardiology and we'll take a look under the hood just to be safe. I'm like, cool, sounds good to me, whatever. I go and I get an echocardiogram. I'm actually a little upset while it's going on, because I'm like, man, I'm gonna have to pay like $2,000 to get this done. It's not gonna show anything new, it's completely unnecessary, but whatever, we're being safe. About a week later, my phone rings, it's the cardiologist, he's giving me the results, and the first thing he says is, so, <laughs> the valve from before was doing just fine, but uh, they found something else. So this is your uh, aortic valve. This is where the issue is. Aortic valve regurgitation. What a mouthful. My heart's aortic valve leaks. The heart is supposed to pump blood out to the body. Regurgitation is when some of that blood leaks back in. Because the heart chamber has to work harder to compensate for this regurgitation, the extra pumping and extra blood causes the heart to grow too much and it becomes less efficient. Side note, hilarious epitaph idea. Here lies Austin. His heart was just too big. So I'm on medication now to lower my heart rate. We're monitoring it. I've had scans, procedures, consults. It's been an experience. Over the last year, uh, we have tried just sort of slowing me down, reducing stress. I hope this explains why I have uploaded fewer videos this year than last. Turns out pulling constant all-nighters to put videos together uh, it doesn't do your heart any favors. The big looming threat is aortic dissection. As the aortic valve gets bigger, its tissue starts stretching. Stretch it too much, and it tears. Blood surges through the tear, the inner and middle layers of the aorta separate, and at that point, it's pretty much lights out. Aortic dissection killed actress Lucille Ball, Einstein, Hiromi Tsuru, and even King George II, if you can believe it. Kentaro Miura, the artist behind the Japanese manga Berserk, also died due to aortic dissection just this year. Of all people that experience aortic dissection, 40% die immediately and do not reach a hospital in time. Of those that do, 1% die every hour, making prompt diagnosis and treatment a priority. Even after diagnosis, 5 to 20% die during surgery or in the immediate post-operative period. So, 
The idea is fix the problem before aortic dissection can occur. Going forward, doctors will monitor my heart, measure the growth of my aortic valve, and when the time is right, they'll perform open heart surgery to repair the issue. It'll actually be my second open heart surgery. Uh, I have this nifty scar that runs down my chest from the first one when I was little. This is the survival strategy. My overall strategy is to live in such a way that even if the worst should happen, I'll be ready to go. I'm making this video to use as, I guess, a sort of a time capsule, and also to encourage you, go to the doctor, get regular checkups, even if you think you don't need them, just go anyway. Like, err on the side of caution, because believe me, uh, <laughs> you never know. If you want to learn more about my particular situation, I will, I'll leave some medical links in the description if you care. But mainly this is like just a, just a heads up to let you know what's going on with me behind the scenes. I don't know, I don't really like making these kinds of videos. It's like, it feels exploitative? I don't know if that's the right word. I don't know what I'm talking about. It makes me uneasy to turn personal, private, medical stuff into programming. Does that make sense? I don't know. I'm still processing this stuff as it's happening, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up um, to let you know what's going on with me. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I want to keep, I want to keep doing this, you know, as long as I can. Um, and as long as you all want to keep watching. Uh, so I'm going to do my best to make sure that my ticker keeps pumping. Um, and I hope you all are doing well. Okay, take care.